Hi, everyone. I'm Shannon Kaliski. And I'm Nick Ginner. And we're your product managers for spatial analysis and data science. Here to give you an update on some of what's new since the last time you were here. Well, ArcGIS continues to grow and expand in all aspects of spatial data science, from data engineering to visualization and exploration, spatial analysis, machine learning and AI, big data analytics, modeling and scripting, and sharing and collaboration. And Nick and I are going to walk you through some of our favorite new features. Nick, how about you get us started? Thanks, Shannon. At ArcGIS Pro 2.8, we introduced a new experience to make data engineering faster, easier, more intuitive, and even more spatial. This experience helps users to easily explore their data using charts, maps, and statistics, and provides a number of tools for preparing data for analysis. With Pro 2.9, we're including a number of new features to improve performance and to help users be even more productive with data engineering. Some of these new pieces of functionality include the ability to drag and drop fields directly from the data engineering pane to geoprocessing tools, to export statistics as a table, and to easily work with standalone tables. Within the last year, we've done a whole bunch of work on our bread and butter spatial analysis. We've added over 100 new tools. We've added the new SAS ArcGIS bridge. And we've added one tool in particular that I'd like to highlight, which is the new presence only prediction tool. This tool is used to predict the presence of a phenomenon in a geographic area based only on known presence locations of that phenomenon and explanatory variables. Some examples of the, uh, this tool's use might include predicting the geographic distribution of say mangroves based on environmental variables such as climate, soil, and topography, or for predicting the environmental suitability of an invasive uh, marine species such that we can understand and mitigate invasion risk. Behind the scenes, this tool uses the popular Maxent algorithm, which is widely used in species distribution modeling and habitat suitability analysis. Speaking of mangrove classification, that is actually one of our newest pre-trained UAI models. And it's hard to believe that it's been just over a year since we first introduced these. These pre-trained models make it easier for you to get started with AI workflows, taking the time out of training models and taking the guesswork out of building them. And we have over 20 different models available in the Living Atlas for you to pick up and start using today. And in the world of the Python API, we've added a number of new automation and, and enhancements to make spatial data science go much quicker and to eliminate some of the manual work you were having to do before. One great example of this is we've created new workflows for being able to automatically extract and classify coastlines. We've also added new models to the ArcGIS.Learn module. These include image segmentation and object detection models, which can help you do things like map gl the glacial terminus, or you can detect where sustainable aqu aquaculture may be occurring. In the world of ArcGIS notebooks, we have some really exciting features coming. We've added the ability for you to publish your notebooks as web tools using Notebook Server, meaning that you can create fully parameterized tool interfaces for people to interact with your analysis and models and really give you an ability to operationalize them into production. We've also added the ability for you to use webhooks to automatically trigger your notebooks to run. This is available in ArcGIS Enterprise, but we hope to bring these features to online soon. We've also added a number of new samples that will be available to you directly within your notebook interface. As a scientific community, it's very important for us to understand global problems such as climate change, biodiversity loss, natural disasters, and disease outbreaks so we could plan better and create a more sustainable planet going forward. Fortunately, there are a plethora of multi-dimensional data sets available concerning the atmosphere, oceans, and the earth, and ArcGIS provides a powerful set of tools to help us analyze this data. We could do things like find anomalies or deviations in data over time. We could explore trends in data, such as increases, decreases, or seasonality. We could use these trends to make forecasts and future predictions. And we could evaluate changes over time, such as deforestation and urban sprawl. At Pro 2.9, we've continued to build our multidimensional data and analysis capabilities with new functionality to extract principal components from multidimensional data, to calculate moving window statistics along a dimension uh, for things like smoothing a time series, and for reading and writing ZRA data, which is a modern multidimensional data format 
that's optimized for distributed processing. Many scientists use the R ArcGIS bridge to bring together the rich data science and analytics capabilities of R with the powerful mapping, visualization, and spatial analytics of ArcGIS. R contains hundreds of packages dedicated to specific scientific domains, tasks, and data sets, including ecology, climatology, soil science, oceanography, and many, many more. In the past year, we've enhanced the R ArcGIS bridge to allow users to connect to hosted vector and raster data in ArcGIS Enterprise and online, to use R notebooks alongside ArcGIS Pro, to create interactive maps in R notebooks, and to call ArcPy geoprocessing tools from within an R script or a notebook. Well, that was a whirlwind tour of what's new in spatial data science at Esri. Be sure to stick around for the rest of the conference to learn much more. Thank you.